Hi folks, welcome back to the Hooked Hut. It's early August and now we're well into the UK sharking season of 2018. Now recently I've, I've seen quite a lot of uh, sadly inferior bike traces and rubbing leaders etc being sold on the likes of Facebook and on the internet. And it really does concern me because obviously as a sports fisherman we want to take care of these uh, beautiful fish that we're catching. And the first step to doing that is making sure that we've got good, strong tackle that's not going to let us down. The last thing we want to do at the end of the day is leave gear in fish. So I thought then I would show you how I make my bike traces. Uh, this is the way I was shown how to make them. And I can honestly say I've never, ever had one of them fail yet. So first of all, then you need your wire. Now, the wire that I use is uh, this AFW 49 strand wire in 400 pounds. I used to use a wire from a different manufacturer. Uh, I used to use a 250 pound wire for blue sharking and I used to use a 400 pound wire for poor beagles. Now to be honest, since I've started using this AFW wire, um, it's as thin as the old 250 that I used to use so that there's no point in me changing my wires. I just use this 400 pound for both blues, poor beagles, threshers, whatever. Right, I cut my wire off about six foot. Most people seem to make their bike traces around about five foot. Um, I tend to make it that little bit longer, purely because if you do have to cut the hook off, um, it means that you've still got some room to play with to put a new hook on. Otherwise you can shorten your bike trace down quite quickly. So, like I said, just over six foot, so that's the wire. Uh, then I use my hooks. I use a 10 hook, and the reason why I use a 10 hook and quite a thin gauge 10 hook is purely because it takes a lot less pressure to set that hook than say a 14 or 16 you know, I've seen bigger than that people are using, it's crazy. And the amount of pressure it must take to set that hooks is, is mad. So like I said, I use a 10 quite a thin gauge 10 and, and they seem to work perfectly for all types of sharking. Obviously you can't bully say a, a big poor beagle too much with one of these because you are going to straighten it out but then again it's not about bullying the fish in my eyes it's all about playing that fish and I would much rather have that merry dance as I say with those fish than just drag them in so the hooks of the tenno then obviously you want your crimps and you want double barrel crimps you don't want single barrel um, I've spoken about these before let's just see if I can find a single barrel for you <clears throat> so these are the single barrel crimps you can see there and they're used for mono and then you've got your double barrel crimps if you can see that they're used for wire now the reason why I don't use double barrel for mono is purely because when you crimp those down it, uh, it can easily bite far too much into that mono and then weaken it so I only use single barrel for mono and double barrel for wire so I'm going to start at the opposite end to the hook end now a lot of people use thimbles, I'll show you some of those, I've got some of those, these things. Um, I personally don't, I've made a few traces up with them, but I, uh, I tend to not use them, I use an offshore loop. So there we go, people use those thimbles then, just so that you can easily clip in uh, the rubbing leader. But you don't have to, like I say, what I do is I tie what's known is an offshore loop so it's basically once through the loop twice through the loop and then you pull that down and that gives you you can see that your offshore loop so pull it down quite small there, you go. there. and then you just clip straight into there the reason why I like offshore loops is a lot of the pressure is taken by the loop itself and all that will happen is that will tighten down. The pressure, most of the pressure is taken off of the crimps. If you just got a straight oval loop, then all the pressure is being taken by those crimps to stop it coming undone. So that's why I do prefer to use an offshore loop. So, let's get our crimp down there. So we used, I use two crimps at each end. I don't use the one, some people do but I much prefer to use two. Again, just to make sure they're extra strong and safe. Okay. Let's put that in there. So first crimp on, I've wasted a bit of wire here. First crimp on, 
second crimp on. Now the way you crimp these, I've seen people crimp them flat. Uh, that's totally the wrong way to do it. You crimp them down together. So you squash both barrels together, not side by side. So I normally go the one above, so these are 1.6. So I go up to the two mil, and then I crimp just shy of the end. And that way then it flares out that end rather than crimping it tight to bite into the wire. So make sure you're crimping it straight. Um, if it's crooked in the jaws, you'll ruin the crimp. It will just get squashed in a funny way and won't be as strong. So I do one there and one just a little bit further back again, leaving the end shy. So that's all good. Then I go down to the 1.6. To crimp obviously the same place. Let's crimp that up. And same place. Make sure that's good and square. Crimp that up. Okay. Now for the next one, what you do is take it back and trim it back to where you want that crimp to sit. So if you want it to sit there, move it back and cut that there. What you don't want to do is like that, have a big tag end off or even one here because you're going to find when you're using it, you're going to get it stuck in your fingers, um, you'll get it catching on things. So it's all about making it nice and neat so it doesn't catch. So we cut that off. So I want that crimp about a crimp's width apart, maybe just a little bit less. Let's cut that off. Okay, so there we go, you see? Covers that end nicely. There we go. And then we just crimp that one down. Crimp down. And that one. There we go. Nice and square. Make sure they're nice and tight. There we go. So there you go, they're nice and neat with the offshore loop. And then what I do to finish it off is I put a piece of heat shrink around it. Let's see, this should fit this one. There we go. So sit that down over it. And you just use, you can either do it over a kettle do it with a lighter, just shrink that tube down, that's it, that's that end done. So then we move on to the hook end, so remember first of all you've got to put all your bits on first, heat shrink tube down first, then you want two crimps, Two, like so, that's those down, and you want your hook. So, there we go, nice 10-0 hook, beautiful. Now, I don't know whether it makes any difference, but I always put the wire through that way, rather than that way. I don't know whether it pulls on it any better, I have no idea, but it's just the way I do it. So, then you do an offshore loop. So you go through the eye of the hook again, and then you're gonna go once through the loop, twice through the loop. And pull that end down. Don't make it too tight, because you need that hook to swing freely. So. There we go, and that hook swings nice and freely. Okay, right, let me put our crimps on. So we do exactly the same as we did the other end. Now, what you don't wanna do, don't push it up too close to the offshore loop. Again, you don't wanna stress that wire, so have it a little bit back from the loop. You will find the loop will tighten down 
when you're playing a fish it just does you can't uh, you can't stop that so always check it after you've played a fish check that that hook still frings sweetly if it doesn't cut it off put another one on okay one again look you can see back from the edges and it makes them flare out there we go you can probably see that it makes them flare out and that's what you want so go down to 1.6 Crimp it up tight. That's my knuckle cracking. Getting too old, clearly. Okay. There we go. That's that one. First crimp done. Let's get that in. Then there we go. Okay. So again, cut this back to where you want it to be. There. There we go. So it's got that gap in between. Hope you can see all this. There we go. Once. Twice. Three. And four. Again, like I say, you've got to make sure every time that that crimp is square in those jaws. If it's slightly off, it's going to crimp in it in a weird shape and it's going to lose a lot of its strength. So there you go, you see? Both ends on each one flared out. And then that puts a lot less pressure on the wire. If you crimped it right to the ends, then as that wire is moving around, it could easily bite into it. And then obviously weaken that wire and you're going to lose your fish. So all we need to do now then... Let's put the heat shrink over it. Okay, light up. Shrink that down nice and evenly. There we go. I always sort of squeeze it round because it's still nice and soft and pliable. And there we go. That's it. That's my bike trace made. So thanks for watching. In our next clip, we'll show you how to make the rubbing leader. So until then, folks, tight lines, and we'll see you on that boat.